You know, recently as the country watches what's going to happen around the 10th anniversary of 9-11, the press has begun to show a lot more coverage. And I've read and I've, I've seen and heard people say, I'll never forget 9-11. I've even heard people say, I'll never forget where I was on 9-11. And being somebody that was there, obviously I'll never forget 9-11. Moreover, it's made me think, though, about some of the other historical events that have occurred in my lifetime. And the interesting thing for a lot of them is they have a tie to Moorhead because I grew up here. I remember Watergate. That's the first big event that comes to my mind. Uh, we were actually on a family vacation in South Carolina. To be honest, it came to a grinding halt as my dad and my uncle sat in front of the TV, mesmerized in disbelief at what was going on. I can remember the Vietnam War coming to an end. I remember the planes coming back and I remember in our house that sat on the hill next to Nun Hall, you know where that is, watching a black and white TV, watching the soldiers come off of the planes, kiss the ground, thankful to be home, and then run to their loved ones. I remember the revolution in Iran. I remember the hostages that were taken as a result of that. And I remember asking my mom and dad, why do they hate our country so much? I remember when President Ronald Reagan was shot. I was actually having baseball practice for our high school baseball team. It was cold and rainy that day, so we actually went to the parking lot next to the ACC down here. Um, my coach called us over to his car and said, the president's been shot. And we stood there, put our baseballs down for the day, and listened to the broadcast. I can remember the Space Shuttle Challenger disaster. I was a freshman in college here at the university. My roommate and I sat in our room on the eighth floor of, Nunha of Alumni Tower. I understand it's co-ed now. <laughs> it probably was back then too. <laughs> we put our books to the side and we watched the shuttle explode over and over again as they continued to show the footage. And I can remember when the Berlin Wall came down as a symbol of the end of the Cold War that had been so much a part of my life to that point. And then just this year, the world watched in shock as our Moorhead State Eagles beat the Louisville Cardinals in the NCAA tournament. Clap. I've heard this is going to be put on the web, so I'm hoping all of our Moorhead alums around the state are able to watch that and feel pride once again for that. Watching that victory was actually one of the many reasons that I was so happy to make it out of the World Trade Center on 9-11. Gene actually reminded me last week that many of the students here on campus are somewhere between the ages of my two oldest sons, which means they're between 19 and 23 years old which means they really don't have a great memory of 9-11. My youngest son is now 15 and has little memory at all. My middle son, now 19, when he was 12, came running into the kitchen. I wasn't home, but went running into the kitchen and said to my wife, Kim, my dad was there. So three years after it, he realized what was going on. So most of the students here probably know through the internet, through watching TV coverage, what, it, what happened that day. Which means they really don't know much about the World Trade Center. The World Trade Center itself was actually a building of seven different buildings. The two most famous were the towers, nicknamed the Twin Towers for obvious reasons. But there were five other buildings. Those five buildings all either were destroyed or were damaged beyond repair in the attacks of 9-11 when the towers both fell. The buildings were incredible. They were a city in, inside of a city. There were barber shops, there were banks, there were bakeries, there were beauticians, there were all bees. There were coffee shops, hotels, offices, pharmacies. There were restaurants, tailors, and actually more shops than you'd ever find in a large shopping mall. The New York City subway system and the Port Authority train system named the PATH system both had hubs that came into the basement of the World Trade Center and people would come up escalators to emerge into the financial district of Manhattan. 
I can remember riding those escalators on a daily basis coming up from the train station from New Jersey where I lived and thinking to myself, there are actually more people in this building than the whole population of Moorhead. So how did a guy from Moorhead, Kentucky end up working on the 71st floor of the World Trade Center? Well, as Gene said, I worked for a company that bid on a contract to manage HR benefits and payroll for the Port Authority of New York and New Jersey. The Port Authority, or the PA as they're called in New York, has 10,000 employees that manage all the transportation and commerce that Gene talked about in his introduction. In the final stages of that bidding process, we were asked to present three resumes of the people that we would propose would be the engagement directors for that outsourcing contract. My resume was one of them. I received a call from a very good friend that afternoon in my Lexington, Kentucky home. He simply said to me, Kyle, you need to get into a New York state of mind. For those of you that don't understand that reference, it's a reference to a Billy Joel song. My wife, Kim, has always supported my career from the day that we left MSU. She's always supported me in wherever I want to go. Even after 9-11, we've moved, as Jean said, across the world. Her response was the same then as it has always been. She simply always says, life is a journey. There's no reason to let it be boring. My mom's response was a bit different. She asked me if I remembered that the terrorists had tried to bomb the towers a few years earlier than that. I would live to regret my response. I said, it's like lightning, Mom. They'll never hit the same place twice. I loved working in New York. Electricity fills the air every day with all the business and commerce and things impacting the world's economy that go on there. On nice days, I would go outside. I'd grab a hot dog or a piece of greasy New York thin pizza from a street vendor. And I'd sit and watch the thousands of people go on their way living their life. One day I was walking along the Hudson and a couple walked up to me and they were obviously lost. They had maps everywhere and couldn't find out where they were going and they said, can you give us some directions please? I said, well I can try. They asked me if I knew where a certain place was and I said, yeah, but I can't tell you how to get there. I'll have to walk you there myself. And it was just one of those places that you can't get there from here. So we were walking and they were asking me questions, you know, where you work, and oh, you're working the World Trade Center. We haven't even been there yet. Should we go there? Yeah, you should probably go there. Took some pictures of them at some landmarks along the way, and when we finally arrived where we were headed, or they wanted to go, the husband turned to me and he said, thanks so much. You were right. We would have never found this place without you. The wife then continued and said, and thank you for your kindness to take time out of your day to walk us down here. You know, people from back home, they told us that New Yorkers were rude. And you just made us feel at home. I said, well, thank you. Where is home? Paducah, Kentucky. <laughs> I smiled, said goodbye, turned and walked, unable to break it to them that I was from Moorhead, probably didn't qualify as a New Yorker. Working in one of the tallest buildings in the world has its own set of unique circumstances and challenges. To begin with, you didn't take the elevator to the 71st floor. You took the elevators with an S. You waited in the ground floor lobby for an elevator. You take the elevator to the 44th floor to what was called the Sky Lobby. Then you wait there for another bank of elevators that would take you on to the higher floors. It was explained to us that this was simply an engineering mastery to make it safer to travel in those buildings. The elevators traveled a whole lot faster than the ones I remember at Alumni Tower. The elevators were different in another way too though. They were very special. They would warn you that they were shutting, but they wouldn't stop shutting. So when you go back to your dorm tonight, students, and you throw your hand in there and you push back on that little door coming through and it flies back, you'll think about the fact that if you were in the World Trade Center, you wouldn't be getting that hand back. I actually once watched a man start running, yelling, hold the elevator, hold the elevator, which couldn't be done. Jump, hit his head on the elevator, fall straight back and lay there as the elevator just closed. Those of us already on the elevator looked at each other and with typical New York compassion said, tourist. 
In my second week at the World Trade Center, a storm hit the New York area. I was in a, a meeting on the 71st floor, and there was a lot of rain and winds. And I'll admit that I wasn't very productive in that meeting because I sat there and I watched my pencil roll back and forth on the conference room table. It was explained to me that it was doing that because the building was actually swaying with the wind because we were up so high. Then there was the time that I was on the phone with my brother, who today is known as Dr. Kip Crager, MD. I was talking to him and I glanced out my window which looked out over top of the Statue of Liberty and to my surprise there was the Goodyear blimp, eye level. Pilot was taking it up the Hudson towards the Meadowlands for Monday night football. On Sunday, September the 9th, 2001, I attended church with my family. We went home and we had a nice lunch. I then grabbed my suitcases and headed to the World Trade Center to work. That's right, I said Sunday. See, I had a presentation that had to be done 10 a.m. on Tuesday, September the 11th. And my presentation wasn't ready. Not that I was procrastinating, it just wasn't ready. So after church, I went to the World Trade Center and I decided I was going to work Sunday night late and Monday night late and make sure that I had the presentation ready for Tuesday. I had made reservations to stay at the Marriott, which was part of World Trade Center 3. They had a hotel in, inside the World Trade Center. You see, my commute from my home outside of Princeton, New Jersey, was one and a half hours one way. And I knew that I was going to lose too much time doing the commute to really get done and focus on the presentation. So I stayed away from my family. Monday night after work, I called my wife at home. And for some reason, and she still teases me about this today, she said, promise me you'll be home tomorrow. And I said, sure, I'll be home. Told you I would, I'll be home. On Tuesday morning, September the 11th, I got up early, checked out of the Marriott. I picked up my breakfast, which was comprised of a cho chocolate chip bagel, cream cheese, and a Diet Dr. Pepper. I then headed to my office to do some work before the meeting. I'd worked for about an hour at my desk. I had just finished signing off on the payroll register of the pay cycle we had just completed on Monday, the, the 10th, for the pay that would be delivered on the 14th. And I decided to print out many copies of a spreadsheet to hand out in my meeting at 10 o'clock. I got up, left my office, and started walking towards the printer. Because I work there now, I'll tell you that it was a Lexmark. <laughs> As I walked towards the printer, I heard a low, dull noise behind me that started growing louder and louder. Before I could even turn, the building surged in the same direction that I was walking. As I fought to catch my balance, the building surged in the opposite direction just as violently. And then for just a few seconds, it sat there and teetered back and forth. When it finally came stable, I kind of looked around. I looked to the north, I looked to the east, and I looked to the south. The best way I can explain what I saw was it felt like I was in the middle of a Christmas snow globe. As glass and metal and paper all showered down every side of the building. The emergency system wasn't going off, nothing was being said, no sirens were going off, but in my mind I knew one thing, I needed to get my people out of that building. So I quickly went down the stairs to the 70th and the 69th floors where my team was located. I had 17 team members there in total at the time. I was able to find 12 of them, and I told them to head for the stairs. I had to actually show some of them where the stairs were because they were there on a short-term project and didn't even know the layout of the building that well. There were five left that I had no idea where they were. I could only hope that they had not either made it to work or they were already headed down the stairs themselves. The trip down the stairs was really slow, but it was extremely well organized. In fact, I believe it saved a lot of lives how calm everyone was on the stairs. We'd been trained in monthly emergency drills that they did with us to put our right hand on the stairwell in front the, as we went down and our left hand on the shoulder of the person in front of us whenever it was dark. Luckily though, the emergency lights were on in the stairwells for most of the trip down. 
people helped the disabled or the people with health problems. Some people stopped and prayed with those that were frightened. And some tried to talk and tell jokes just to prevent panic. Most of my team was several minutes in front of me, but I had a good friend named Kevin from St. Louis that went down the stairwells the whole way with me. My pager went off. That's right, not my cell phone. Back then we didn't have cell phones. We had pagers. But my pager went off. My parents' home phone number showed up on it. I knew that whatever had happened, it now had made national news. I felt a calm come over me as I knew Moorhead and Princeton and elsewhere, there were people praying for me. I've had former classmates, teammates, teachers and coaches all confirm for me that they were praying for me at that time. My high school baseball coach, who was a card, told me that he simply said, God, that boy stole a lot of bases for me. Please let him steal this one too. There was a smell in the tower that we soon realized was jet fuel. I've never admitted this to anyone, let alone my wife, but still today when I smell jet fuel, I get nauseated. I don't let it prevent me from flying, it just makes me wish I was anywhere else but flying. I received a news update from CNN that incorrectly stated that a small private jet plane had crashed into the North Tower of the World Trade Center. As I read it, the, shower, the tower shook violently for the first time since the original explosion. Several hours later, I would realize that it shook because the South Tower had just been struck by the second plane. Firemen and policemen, service people, emergency personnel were going up the stairs as we were going down the stairs. They would always ask if we were okay. They'd always tell us, just keep going, there's people down there to help you, you'll be fine. A coworker of mine had a camera and took some pictures. She took pictures of us carrying people and us having fun going down the stairs. And she incidentally caught the picture of some of the emergency workers. As she put a scrapbook together afterwards, she found that two of them, it was the last picture that would ever be taken of them. After about 30 minutes of going down the stairs, we reached the sky, the sky lobby. Kevin and I decided to go through the lobby to another stairwell, hoping that the, the traffic might be moving a little bit faster on that one. We looked out the windows, and the debris was still falling, but this time it was different. It was all on fire. At this point, I realized the seriousness of the situation. I wasn't concerned about dying, but I prayed for my wife and my children. I asked God if he would comfort them and let them know that I love them, that if I never got to talk to them again, I just wanted them to know in their heart that I love them. We reached the 14th floor, and I just remember thinking to myself quickly, 57 flights of stairs, and I'm still higher than any building in Moorhead. When we reached the lobby, the sight was a shock to me. All the glass was broken out, Fires burned outside of the tower frame. Water was everywhere due to the sprinkler system. And emergency personnel were running around on their, and yelling at each other and on their walkie-talkie.